Sabrina Pauli will continue her lecture series. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today, I'm, this will be completely dis disconnected from the last two lectures. Today I'll introduce plain tropical curve, but in the end you'll see an application to uh, enumerative geometry. Yeah, so you can also define, uh, so by the plane I mean R2, you can also define tropical curves in Rn, uh, but let's, let's stick to this today. You can also define tropical varieties, hypersurfaces, or yeah, but let's stick to this. I don't have that much time, so let me first uh, motivate how they arise. So for this, let K again be a field. And now, today we're not working over K, but uh, over the field of Fuser series over K. What is this? Um, you just take the union over all non-negative integers and you take a uh, uh, Laurent series with p to the 1 over n. So what do the elements in here look like? Um, they are they are basically Laurent series where you allow rational coefficients. So it's a zero t to the q zero plus a one t to the q one, and so on and so forth. Um, the q i i and q, and uh, let's say q zero is smaller than q one, and so on and so forth. And um, also since they have to be in some k t over 1 over n. Uh, for each element in here, there is an n um, such that qi times n is actually an integer for all i. For example, if um, the characteristic of k is 0, then the algebraic closure of the field of Laurent series is um, you take the algebraic closure of K and take the Fuser series over it. But uh, you really need the characteristic to be zero if the characteristic of K is uh, P bigger than zero then uh, the Artin uh, Schreier polynomial um, this polynomial has a zero, which is not in the Fizeau series, namely t to the one minus uh, t to the minus one over p, t to the one uh, minus one over p squared, and so on and so forth. So this doesn't satisfy this condition here. This is just a fun example. Um, what we will need for um, with this is or use a lot is the valuation on the field of Fusil series. So we have a valuation which goes from our field to Q and we also have we need infinity which sends A0 T to the Q0 and then we have higher order terms to zero and zero of course to infinity. This uh, satisfies uh, the properties of evaluation namely the evaluation of A is infinity if and only if uh, A is equal to zero. The evaluation of uh, a plus b is bigger or equal to the minimum of the valuation of a and the valuation of b. And um, the valuation of a times b is the valuation of a plus the valuation of b. So when you do tropical 
geometry, there are there's two sides, um, two groups of people. One group does uh, uses a max convention, and one group uses a min convention. So I learned it with a max convention. So what I actually want to do is put a minus in front of the uh, evaluation. So this goes to minus infinity here, here. And I just have to add the minuses in the correct spot now. So, um, yeah, you know, later we'll apply to tropicalize the Turner curve over the field of Poisson series. We'll apply minus the valuation. And then uh, in the, our tropical operations will be, oh yeah, I need to also turn this. This will be the max, as I said. Um, our tropical addition, so this addition turns into the uh, tropical addition, which is the maximum, and uh, multiplication turns into the tropical multiplication, which we'll be adding. That's just a preview. Let's see how this works. So let's see how we get from a curve over the field of Fresnel series to, um, to a tropical curve. So for this, I, for today, I really want the characteristic of k to be zero, and let's also assume that k is algebraically closed. Um, and now, let's take a polynomial f with coefficients in the field of Poisson series. And since we want to do curves, let's take two variables. You can also do this in more variables or less but let's do this today with two variables. So uh, let's really start with like the, um, the easiest case that the degree of f is one. So I can write f as follows. Um, I write it as, um, from now on I'll just write a tilde if I have something in the field of uh, Fizeux series. Um, plus B tilde uh, Z1 plus C tilde Z2, where A tilde is really, and now I start with A, T to the valuation of A tilde plus higher order terms in T. The same for B tilde. plus higher order terms in T, and the same for C tilde. So I want to say something about the curve defined by F or um, the zeros of F. So let's try to describe the zeros of F. So um, question. When is, let's say, P1 tilde, P2 tilde in field of Pisseau series um, to the 2, 0 of F? So let's try to answer this uh, question like really naively. Just let, let's just plug it in and see what happens. Again, pi tilde I want to write as pi t to the valuation of pi tilde plus higher order terms for i 1 and 2. So we want to set 0 equal to f of p1 tilde, p2 tilde. So what do we get? First of all, um, a t to the valuation of uh, a tilde plus higher order terms, then um, b times p1 t to the valuation of b tilde plus the valuation of p1 tilde plus higher order terms, plus c times p2 t to the valuation 
of C tilde plus the valuation of P2 tilde plus higher order terms. So the first um, thing to solve for is this uh, initial coefficient of P1 tilde and P2 tilde, P1 and P2. And when can we actually solve this? We can solve this exactly when the minimum of the valuation of A tilde and the valuation of B tilde plus the valuation of P1 tilde and the valuation of C tilde plus the valuation of P2 tilde is attained at least twice, then, because then we have an equation to solve for one of these. So let me write this down. I'm sorry, this is a little technical right now, maybe, but that's the, we'll be done in a bit. And then you'll see the first top of the curve. So necessary is that um, the minimum of the valuation of A tilde, the valuation of B tilde, plus the valuation of P1 tilde and uh, the valuation um, of C tilde plus the valuation of P2 tilde um, is attained at least twice. And if I um, would now call this, let's call this x and this y, I would get a, a tropical curve with the min convention, but I said I want the other convention. So I'm going to do max here. So this is equivalent to saying that the max of the minus the variation and here minuses and here minuses is attained at least twice. So let's draw this. So now I want x to be this including the minus and y to be this including the minus. So I came up with some example. Let's assume that minus the valuation of two, uh, of A is two. Um, let's assume that minus the valuation of B tilde is minus a half. And that here the valuation of C tilde is just zero. And then we have to find where the maximum is attained at least twice. So what do we need to do for that? I'll just take two out of these three things and set them equal. So for example, x minus a half is equal to uh, two. So x is 1.5. So let's say this is around here, like this. And uh, let's draw this part. And let's do this with the second and uh, uh, the first and the last. So 2 is equal to, I guess, y. So that is here. And then the last one is x minus a half is equal to y, which is and this is the first example of a tropical curve. Uh, here, this constant part is uh, maximal here, so two is max. Here, uh, x minus a half is max. And here, uh, y is maximum.
so that's pseudos in general for a polynomial with coefficients in the field of Fusser series, um, but high, higher degrees. of C1, C2. Let me write this as A, I, J, tilde, uh, Z, I, uh, Z1 to the I, Z2 to the J. Let this be a polynomial. Then for F of P1 tilde, P2 tilde equal to zero, it is necessary that if I again say x is minus the valuation of p1 tilde and y is minus the valuation of p2 tilde, just like before, then it is necessary that the maximum over the ij um, of i times x plus j times y minus the valuation of a i j tilde is attained at least twice. And this will be our tropical curves. So are there any questions until now? Then let's define tropical curves, plain tropical curves. For this, we need the tropical MI ring. This is T. We have tropical addition and tropical multiplication. And T is just the real numbers. And we add minus infinity. Um, what's the tropical addition? X plus Y is, um, as I already said, the maximum um, of X and Y. And x times y is x plus y. So what does a tropical polynomial look like? It is really a polynomial in there, so I'll write it as follows. I'll take a big plus with the circle around, meaning I, I add uh, tropically v i j uh, tropical multiplication x to the i. I write as x to the tropical multiplication i times. So I mean by this, uh, multiply x with itself i, I times tropically and y the j. So you can tr translate this. This is the maximum over the ij of vij plus ix plus jy. Okay. Then um, I want to define a tropical curve as a vanishing locus of a tropical polynomial. We've already seen what the vanishing locus should be. It should be where the maximum is attained at least twice.
So if I have a polynomial, topical polynomial like this, um, this is all the points um, x, y, what is this? Oh, yeah, let's say x, y in R2 such that the maximum is attained at least twice. One other thing where you can think about it is here, these are all linear. So taking the max of these, all of these linear guys defines a piecewise linear function. And the topical vanishing locus is then exactly where this piecewise linear function is not differentiable. Um, right. Then if I have a polynomial over the field of Fizeau series, I can turn it into a tropical polynomial. We've already seen this. So D1, Dt to the J in here. And I call it F trop. And this will be in X and Y. Um, and what I just do. I tur turn the sum into this tropical big sum, and then I take minus the valuation of a i j tilde, and then I just write, I just turn multiplication into tropical multiplication. And um, now we've seen that uh, for this to have a zero, it's uh, for this to have a zero, it's necessary that if I take minus the valuation of a zero, is in the tropical vanishing locus of the uh, associated tropical polynomial. But the next theorem I'll state, which is also known as the fundamental theorem of tropical geometry. Um, tells you that this is actually also sufficient. So this is a theorem by Kapanov. And um, this says the following. So now, let me remind you that our field was algebraically closed and the characteristic of k was zero. Then what I can do is I can look at all the points in, in Q2, which are minus the valuation of P1 tilde, minus the valuation P2 tilde in Q2, such that f of P1 tilde, P2 tilde um, is zero. Um, and what I do now is I look at this as a subset of R and I take the closure. And Kapranov's theorem tells us that this is the same as the tropical vanishing locus of um, the associated tropical polynomial. So I said this was already a definition of a tropical curve, or an example of a tropical curve. Let me give you the definition. Um, is an embedded graph in R2 
um, defined by the tropical vanishing locus uh, of a tropical polynomial. So let's say P is this tropical polynomial. Um, plus, um, we have weights on the edges. So it's a weighted graph. And weights are defined as follows. And most of the time, we will only have weight one, and then um, we won't even write it down. Or we won't even indicate it in the picture. But let's so if E is an edge of this graph, let uh, M E be all the uh, tuples uh, I J and K L such that so these i, j are um, exponents here, and k, l is a different exponent. So we're picking out monomials such that for all, oh, maybe I want to call this f. So I can call the point p, q now. p, q um, uh, on this edge, we have that um, we want that the maximum is attained at least twice by two piecewise, uh, by two, two linear functions. And we want that um, i, j, and k, l are exactly these two linear functions. So I'll write, just write f of p, q is indeed um, d, i, j plus i, p plus j, q, and uh, b, k, l plus um, Kp plus Lq. And then the weight of this edge is the maximum of um, I minus K. Oh, uh, sorry. So GCDs of I minus K and J minus L. Um, for all i, j, k, l in m. I'll do an example in a second, and then this won't be so complicated anymore. Ah, yeah. First remark, as I already said, one only labels edges. Um, uh, with their weights um, of weight, bigger one. All the edges, most of the edges we'll see will have weight one. We've already seen a tropical curve, um, let's say, of degree one, because we had like a degree one polynomial. Let's do a couple with degree two. So let's start with an easy one. So we just take zero plus x plus y uh, plus minus one times x times y um, plus um, minus 2 times uh, uh, 
x squared plus minus 2 times y squared. Maybe I should put like 0 times in between, but this multiplying by 0 is the same as adding 0, so this is like not writing the 1 algebraically. Then uh, I claim that the, first of all, let's translate this. So this is max of 0, x, y, x plus y minus 1, um, 2x minus 2, and 2y minus 2. And this will look as follows. Like this. And um, for example, this line will be x is equal to 0, where I equated 0 and x. So let me get a different color. Here, 0 is maximal. Here, x is maximal. Here, 2x minus 2 is maximal. So if I equate these two, I get x is equal to 2. Uh, so this, is the, this part here is the line x is equal to 2. Here we have y, here x plus y minus 1 is maximal, and here 2y minus 2 is maximal. And here all the edges actually have weight 1, because, yeah, you can, comp like you can compute this. So let's maybe do one where this is not the case. Uh, yeah, I guess it fits here. Let f be 0 plus x plus y plus y squared plus minus 2 x squared. And this will look something like this. where here 0 is maximal, here x, here it's 2x minus 2, and here it's 2y. So now let's do the weights on the edges. Let's start with um, this edge here. I claim this has uh, weight 2, so let's do this. Let's find all the monomials where on this x, uh, the maximum is attained, and I claim that here this is 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2. So we have to take, so the weight is the maximum of, now we take the GCD. Let's compare these two. So I have to take 0 minus 0, this is 0. And 1 minus 0, this is 1. Then I can also compare these two. Then this is GCD 0, 2. And then the last one is, again, GCD 0, 1. Sorry, this is a little small. But turns out that the weight is 2. For this one here, the ME is um, 0, 2, and 2, 0, because the maximum of this is attained and the maximum of this is attained. So the weight here is also 2. So it's a GCD of 2 and 2. It's two. So you see here we have two edges pointing to the left, two to down, two to, to the upper right. And this is really because this is comes from a degree 2 polynomial in general, you, this will be the case because we need 0 maximal, x maximal, then the x squared maximal, and so on and so forth. So let's 
to do something of degree three. Um, here I'm not writing down the equation, just drawing an example. Here we have one way two also. And so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, are there any questions about uh, tropical curves until now? Yes? Um, I'm, I'm doing this now. <laughs> Something like this I'm doing now. Because there's also. Uh, This is a bit, yeah, I, I just tried to, what you just said is a bit like, uh, so determine the degree from the curve is, well, in general, if you have like a nice smooth curve where all the, so smooth tropical curves, they are all the, uh, it follows that all the weights are one, and we only have like um, uh, three valent vertices, and then it's really just, you, you count the number of edges, uh, like, unbounded edges down, the number of unbounded edges to the left and to the upper right. But um, more generally, um, one not you don't use the, uh, doesn't use the degree. Um, but um, the Newton polygon, this is a bit more general. Namely, if I have tropical polynomial, then and the, the Newton polygon is really what it should be of this polynomial, which we one also some, sometimes just also calls degree of the tropical curve, um, is you take the convex hull of all the ij in z squared um, such that Algebraic, you, want, you would want uh, the coefficient to not be zero, but we have in the tropical world, so we don't want it to be minus infinity, which is like the zero in the tropical semi field. So we want to take the convex hull in, in R2. And, um, right. and uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is um, the dual subdivision of the Newton polygon. Or maybe let's just uh, do an example. For all the curves we had before, we had uh, delta D, which is, and D is the degree, the convex hull of just 0, 0, D0, and 0, D. So it just looks like this. Here's the point zero zero. Here we have d zero. We have here we have zero d, and I think that's also all the Newton polygons we'll see today. You see another one in in the exercises. I think uh, I screwed up a bit. Sorry? Yes. Uh, oh yes, thank you, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, something like that. Um, so you can define something like the combinatorial type of a tropical curve. That means it's really just a, I could, for example, shrink this edge and translate it, and for, um, but the, these two curves would have the same combinatorial type. And the combinatorial type is determined by uh, the dual subdivision of the Newton polygon. So let me tell you what this is. So if I have a tropical curve, a plane tropical curve, gamma, then uh, let's say defined by F. then um, the dual subdivision 
can be determined as follows. So let's call it ds of f is a subdivision of the Newton polygon of f. And it's a, this is a lattice subdivision. So um, the Newton polygon is a subset of R2. And we have lattice inside R2. And the lattice subdivision means um, I subdivide it with these, the lattice points. And it's determined, you can determine it uniquely as follows. Namely, you want vertex vertices of the graph to correspond to, let's call it two cells of the dual subdivision. Um, you want edges of weight um, uh, w to correspond to edges in the dual subdivision of lattice length w. So what is the lattice length? It's really what you expect it to do, uh, to, to be. So if you have a, something in the lattice and there are like four lattice points on it, then this lattice length would be three. It's the number of lattice points minus one. Um, and you want that the connected components of R2 minus gamma correspond to the vertices in here. And um, all that such that inclusions are inverted. So here you see you start from uh, dimension zero and go up to dimension two, and here you start from dimension two and go down to dimension zero. So you, what you want is that if you have a vertex of an edge, then this corresponding x is, uh, is an edge of the corresponding two cell, which corresponds to the vertex, and so on and so forth. And dual edges are orthogonal. And that's also how you determine it. You just draw a dual, like an orthogonal edge for each edge of your tropical curve. So let's do this here. It's really not so hard. So here we have a delta 2. I'm also drawing all the lattice points. And we want to subdivide this such that it corresponds to this tropical curve. And um, this is going to look as follows. For, you, for all the bounded edges, you have to add an edge. And I will draw one orthogonal to this. And here, the unbounded edges are the boundary edges here. And again, if you, if you draw orthogonal edges here again, um, these will be, this will give you the, combinator uh, the combinatorial type of the curve back. It's here, oh, it's not so much space. What does this look like? This is just this thing. And here you see this was an edge of weight 2. This has lattice length 2. And this also has corresponds to an edge with lattice length 2. And finally, the hardest one is this will look like this. And again, here we have weight two, and here we have one longer edge. OK. Are there any questions? Otherwise, I'll go to back to Bizu, because one can show Bizu tropically. Um, So Bizu also holds for, for tropical curves. Um,
this also works uh, um, in higher dimensions, so not only for curves, but hyper tropical hypersurfaces. But first of all, I didn't define them. And, and second of all, I can't draw them. Um, but it's the same idea. OK, so let's do two simple tropical curves. So um, we've seen that the tropical line will, always, it will actually always look like this. Let's say that this is gamma 1. And let's intersect it with something coming from a degree 2 polynomial. So we would expect there to be two intersection points. And this looks good. There are two intersection points. But I could now move the line a bit. And then there are only there's only one intersection point. So we need some kind of multiplicity. OK. Um, now, the union of these two co tropical curves, or in general, the union of two tropical curves, is again a tropical curve. And they are this uh, tropical curve is then defined by the tropical product of the tropical polynomials. So gamma 1, union gamma 2, so I have two tropical curves, and this is V trop of F1 times F2 for gamma 1. I'll just write V trop of F1 when I mean that it's defined by this tropical polynomial, like this. So we have ano another tropical curve. And if I have an intersection here, um, call it P, I can go to the picture in the, 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 the dual picture. So this would look like this. So now this has degree 3. this. Um, like this. Uh, and dually, what is the, uh, we know, it's still here, this is a vertex of this tropical curve, which is the union, so it co should correspond to a two cell. And also, it's a four valent vertex, so four uh, edges going in there, so it actually should correspond to a quadrilateral, and it turns out it corresponds to, to this guy. So let me call this delta p. Um, and it, even better, it's a, even a parallelogram, because I always I just draw orthogonal edges here, and then orthogonal edge here, and then orthogonal edge here and here. So I end up with parallel um, edges, um, because the first edge actually was one edge before. So. This one here is dual to P. Let's call this one Q. And this guy here, I'm sorry, it's a bit small, is dual to, to Q. And also here, this time I'll draw a bit bigger. Um, So now, uh, if this is P, then this is delta P. Okay. So now, what should be the intersection multiplicity? I mean, we kind of want two here and two times one here. And this is also, oh no, I don't want to erase this. Um, this should also be like a sensical, like it should make sense, this 
just this definition. So uh, here's a lemma, which you, uh, the, I think the proof is really much calculating. Um, let's assume that gamma i is defined by the vanishing, topical vanishing locus of you took a polynomial over the field of Pissou series and then you tropical, uh, so to take the associated tropical polynomial. So f i i is 1 and 2 um, is in here. Like this. Uh, then one can show that the area of what I call delta p, so that's the thing in the in the dual picture, is equal to the number of p1, p2. So actually, let's say characteristic k is zero and k is all the way to coast. Um, the number of p1 tilde, p2 tilde in the vanishing of f1 and f2, such that um, if I tropicalize by this, I mean I take minus the valuation of p1 tilde and p2 tilde. Sorry, this is small. It says minus the valuation of p1 tilde, comma minus the valuation of p2 tilde is equal to p. Yes, so. If you believe this lemma, you would also believe the following definition, namely the multiplicity of P, the intersection multiplicity, should be just the area of delta P. Um, no, no, they, they won't. Um, um, you're recounting the number, but actually this is something I skip, skip be, be because of time reasons. Let's actually assume, I think if they don't, then this also makes sense, but then they don't, uh, they might not intersect nicely like this. There's also, there's also uh, a term of um, transversal intersection uh, for tropical curves, which really means there's only Isolated intersection points, and these are uh, away from the from the from the vertices. So, yes, thanks for the question. Uh, okay, and now here this this makes sense again. These have area one. This actually um, also has uh, this has area two. So this is length two times the height is one. Makes sense. Okay, and now the last uh, few minutes, I'll show you how to, yeah, in my notes you can s read the definition of tropical transverse intersection. Um, in the last few minutes, uh, I'll show you how to prove uh, Bizou's theorem for tropical curves. So um, let's assume that the Newton polygon of gamma 1 is uh, equal to delta d1. But this also works for, for arbitrary, more arbitrary Newton polygons. There is an exercise in the exercises tomorrow for this. Um, but then I wouldn't call it Pizou anymore. Uh, and the Newton polygon. Um, for gamma 2 is uh, delta d2. And then I claim that if I sum up over all the intersections, and let's write it actually, and they, let's assume that these uh, intersect at all the intersection points um, tropically transversely. Uh, 
um, of these intersection multiplicities is d1 times d2. Um, right, let me maybe draw another picture. Which is a bit more complicated, maybe. So, Now these were both uh, something with degree uh, two. So if I multiply them, I get degree four. So I have to subdivide delta four. Now the proof goes as follows. You want to sum up all the intersection multiplicities, so you want to sum up all the areas of the delta P. P and gamma 1, gamma 2. But instead of doing this, you're taking uh, the area of the big thing, area of delta, this is now d1 plus d2, so the area of this, and you subtract area delta d1 and area delta d2. And let me illustrate in this example why this really is the same. So you have the whole thing. And then how does delta d1 sit in here? Um, let's say this one is gamma 1. Then I can take this piece here and glue it onto here, and glue it onto here, and glue it onto here, and I get the delta two, and I even get the dual subdivision of, the, of gamma one. Here's gamma two, I do the same thing. I take this piece and glue it here. And then what is left is really just uh, the parallelograms corresponding to the intersections. Here we have three intersection these two. And also in this example, we get two times area one and one times area two. So it works. So let's compute this. This is d1 plus d2 squared over two minus d1 squared over two minus d2 squared over two. So this is just d1 times d2. And we're done. Yes? Um, well, like at least uh, everything, uh, I'll just draw dual edges, uh, uh, dual, dual edges. So, um, how do you, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What I mean, I don't know what you mean by moving. It's yeah, it's my yeah. This is like the moving, the no, for each intersection. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. You. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, I know uh, which edges correspond to which edges in here. Oh. And I know, like, whenever I have an intersection, I actually get two, two edges, and these are moved together. Exactly, that's the point. Ah, now I get it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. So there's a little more here. Each, uh, each so this is the dual subdivision of the of the union and each edge that kind of get divided into two edges then has two and these are glued together again. Yes, so, yeah, uh, thanks. Um, right, so let me finish with saying uh, that as a corollary by using the lemma and the topical thing we get Visu for curves over the field of Piso series in the algebraically closed uh, case and characteristic zero. So, corollary is Bizu for curves. Um, and now over the field of Bizu series with K, K bar, and uh, characteristic k equal to zero. So this is a way to prove it. And tomorrow I will do this um, over uh, more or less arbitrary fields uh, k in the Grofen Dick Wittring. And I'll show you how that this also works. Um, and then I'll show you another application of tropical geometry to enumerative geometry over arbitrary fields. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you very much.